outside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to Chicago and the famed Aragon Ballroom for tonight's main event. Ten rounds of heavyweight action, and now the time has come. All the talk, now comes the walk. fight like this that everybody's been talking about. It's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. Good smooth work by Glover. That's classic counterpunching. Yeah, what he did was he pulled that right shoulder back. You know, he just pulled it back, gave him the left shoulder, and then gave him the right hand. Got to be accurate to send the combination to the body, and he does that. Fine looking right hand by Glover. Work the body, work that body. Come on, the executioner's defense is paying off now. Glover's got a little something coming back at him. A counter punch scores. Well targeted right hand by Glover. And now he's targeting upstairs. Glover's blocking ability is doing well for him there. There's the hook. Throws out the jab, and then brings back the uppercut up top. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by the executioner. Glover's movement's really helping him out, avoiding that punch. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by the executioner. Great hook to the head that time. Executioners rocked by a huge hook to the head. So many times you hear of an early round where they're just feeling each other out. No way. Not these guys. Straight to action. Well, if they can keep this up, they're both going to have headaches, but we're going to have a special one on our hands. The Executioners landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. Coming to the end of this round. Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, a round like that where it's a lot of busy activity and both guys being busy. When you were a trainer, are those the kind of rounds that you prefer or do you like the pace to be a little slower? Does it does depend on each guy. No, if I have a fighter, I'd rather have a guy fighting a guy that you never see him. <laughs> Leave me the heck alone. And where I'm in control all the time. But the fans love to see a fight like that. Lovers missing the mark by a mile. That just was nowhere to be found. I like this. He's not skipping a beat. He came out just the way he finished up last round. Yeah, what I like is that he's a thinking man fighter, and his corner gave him probably good advice. They know that the opponent only had 60 seconds to recover, and they're figuring it wasn't up, enough time. Very nice work from both men. They each got a shot in. That's a well-scored left hand by Glover. Comes with the right. Right hand downstairs. Commits to the straight right. The executioner is putting forth a great combination there. That's a big uppercut that just crashed home. Get inside, get inside. Good job, good job, champ. Takes one to give one. He comes back with a right hand. Final minute of a round that'll go down in the history books. On the mark, the counter punch by Glover. Comes right back with a shot of his own. Solid left hand to the head. And right from the start, he's throwing the power punches and landing them. I think he has a date and he wants to get to it. Just 10 seconds to go here in the second round. The Executioners now feeling the after effects of being rocked by a huge hook to the head. And that's the end of round two. Glover's attitude of being effective and aggressive worked out well. His opponent is damaged. Missed the body shot. 
The Executioner is putting forth that hard work he did in training camp there, landing a crisp combination. Able to place the right hand in there. The Executioner's punch is far off the target. That was nice. He just drew the punch from his opponent and then a good counter by Clubber. Yeah, like running through the rain without getting wet. Beautiful. Clubber's doing well here with that two punch combination. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. Halfway through this round here. They trade shots. He comes back with a right hand. A solid, true uppercut by the Executioner. He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. He's jumping all over him now. Oh, that's got to hurt. A non-stop swarming attack puts him down. His opponent feels like he's in a rainstorm. Two, three. And somehow, some way, he's going to continue on here. And if he's going to stay in this fight, now he's going to avoid his opponent like the Black Plague. Oh. Wow, is he defensively sound. Nice combination. Jab, uppercut to the head. How about a return to center with the left hand? Come on. Ten seconds remaining in this round. Unable to land clean by Clubber. All right, keep your hands up and throw you. This is a classic example we're seeing here as we start round number four of just the busier guy taking the fight. He's up three rounds to zip on Teddy's scorecard. Yeah, my concern, though, Joe, I have one little concern. What's there. that? Well, is he winning the battles but maybe going to lose the war because... He's really wearing himself out. He's working so hard to get things done. Down the road, does he pay a price? The Executioner is coming out to fight this round after being knocked down in the previous round. Teddy, any idea? Do you think he's recouped enough here? Well, we're going to find out very quickly by looking at his legs. You're going to look downstairs just like you look downstairs in the basement of a house to see whether or not those bricks are in place or whether or not some of the mortar has kind of disappeared and the bricks are a little loose. You want to see if those legs are stable if they're firm. Really wanted that uppercut, but just couldn't get it. The Executioner is putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. 90 seconds to go in round number four. Defense easily turns into offense. Blocks a blow, sends an uppercut. Goes up top with a right hand. Flubber's the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. The Executioner's right hand working. He is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Uncle Mo has come to visit. Momentum is now on his side. Oh, and there you go. Oh, and now the real test. Can he get up after going down a second time? Four, five. Down he goes, now up he gets. And if he wants to stay up, He's going to have to grab on, kill a little time. The Executioner is swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. I don't know, Teddy. It just feels like one of those nights, one of those fights where somebody's getting hurt, where this is not going to the judges' scorecard. I feel like I'm in Coney Island watching one of those hot dog eating contests where somebody's going to try to eat 50 of them. Of him. In other words, he's not worried how he's going to feel at the end of the night. Flubber's in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teacher. Let's give the trainers credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. A solid left hand by Clubber. 
stay on the inside, inside. Lover's opponent landing an effective counter punch right there. One, two, one, two, that's it. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by the executioner. Good combination landing there. Work the body. The executioner is almost looking foolish that time he missed so badly. Comes right back with some offense of his own. You got this one. Targeting that midsection now with the combo. Piercing jab by Clover. Unable to score with the hook. And banging away he goes. That was a big shot that floored him. And it's a big shot that may end him right here. That looked like the great pitch of great Maddox. His sinker ball. Boy, it went down quick. Six. Hard to prepare for a situation like this, but many do. He's been down, now he's got to survive. So that's where you're wrong. It's not hard to prepare, it's a must to prepare. If you're a trainer, that's what you do in the gym. You teach a guy, if you're in this situation, this is what you do. You grab on, you move your head, you survive. Blocks that punch. Teddy, what would you recommend based on what we're seeing here? Well, two aspirin and then go, oh no, actually I would say a little counterpunching would be just what the doctor ordered. That's a better prescription. Way to hit the target there, jab uppercut. Watch the hook, watch the hook, come on. And now he brings the left hand upstairs. Able to land with the right. Now that's offense by the executioner. Putting his punches together, landing two shots there. That's okay, that's all right. Now pay him back. Go pay him back. And that's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. That's where you want to be. Good job. Not able to land the headshot. Firing off the uppercuts. Great exchange. Come on, give focus. Good work, toe to toe there. Both fighters got in on him. Nice strike after catching one by the executioner. Glover's having Keep his tight. way on the inside, Teddy. This is really paying off for him in these middle rounds. Yeah, well, he's got to be happy with what his opponent's doing. Standing right there, Finish as you the said, as you suggested, standing right in the place he's most comfortable. Fires off the hook. Look at that. So he takes a breather between rounds after he just put forth more of the same punishment. Teddy, we've been sitting here all night long as he lands these thudding blows. You can just hear the damage landing. Yeah, and I can feel them. Some fluids that I don't really want are coming onto my shirt. Oh, and he's got something for him himself, and it's a left hand. Move it. The executioner's combination punching is working well here. Body shot, body Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Staying away from trouble. He's out there on the outside. Smart punch right there. The uppercut works. Halfway through the seventh round. The executioner is looking for a way to get this fight back on course. Of course, 
that can get him a victory. This isn't it. Just trying to counterpunch these middle rounds. No, this is not it. He's not thinking right. You know, it's one thing to say physically, technically, he needs to do that. But to do it, you have to be mentally clear. You have to be seeing the plan, seeing what you have to do, what you have to order your body to do. He's not seeing that right now. And he returns on that exchange. The Executioner is so dangerous with that accuracy, a two-punch combination landing. Clubber showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. Round number eight is underway, and Teddy, a chance to look at your scorecard. You got him up pretty good. We often use that word judicious in describing a fighter, of picking your spots and being effective when you do. Well, that's a good point, Joe, and that's exactly what he's doing. You know, he's making him do what he wants to do without even coming forward. You know, he's pushing him all over the ring, but not with any physical force. Just by making sure that he controls the guy mentally, that he makes the guy feel a certain amount of pressure, and makes the guy react the way he wants him to react. Fires right back at him. The Executioner is now feeling the effects, Teddy, of having his opponent punch right through that guard. Well, he should feel the effects. I mean, look, Joe, it's kind of like standing out in a rainstorm with an umbrella, and all of a sudden the wind's coming, and the rain's coming from the side, and you're standing there under the umbrella and saying, why am I getting wet? Well, you're standing there... What a big shot. Can he beat the count? I don't think so here, Teddy. Now I know where they got that saying, falling like a sack of potatoes. Stopping this fight, the executioners unable to continue. This fight is over. Knockout. It's late in the fight, and it looked like we were going to get.